So you're sitting there watching YouTube or maybe you're walking through the halls of the Comic-Con and you see somebody in an awesome Iron Man suit go by. Have you ever wondered how much it costs to actually make these things? In this video, I wanna break down the actual costs that go into something like 3D printing and building your very own Iron Man suit. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank. So before we get started, I want to preface it with a few little things. Now, only a little bit of this video is going to apply to 3D printing an Iron Man suit. Obviously, we're going to talk about the cost of a 3D printer. But after that, most of the information I'm going to give you can be applied to a, a variety of Iron Man building methods. Foam, paper craft, fiberglass. There's a bunch of different ways to make a suit. But after we talk about the printer itself, you can really use all of these tips for anything. If you want more information on making Iron Man suits and stuff out of foam versus 3D printing, go check out Kiara's workshop because she's about to release a video that's a really great parallel to this one. And last, if you make it through this whole video and at the end you decide, you know what, yes, that's something I want to try to do. I want to make my own Iron Man suit because that seems very reasonable. My entire channel is littered with tutorials on how to do exactly this. I documented my entire first build. I'm documenting my entire second build. So make sure you go and check those out if this turns out to be something you think you want to do. And if at the end of this video you still have some questions, please leave some comments down below. I'll do my best to respond to all of them. And if enough pop up, maybe I'll make a follow up video. But without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about the price. So first things first, 3D printers. Now, this is gonna be the, probably the most expensive and most overwhelming part of this whole journey. There are so many 3D printers to choose from now with more and more being added to the market dang near every day. I'll start by saying that for this, you're gonna wanna budget around $300 to $400 at the minimum. Now we can talk about features and functions all day, but the main thing you're focused on is build volume size. It's the size that the printer can actually print. Now probably the going standard for 3D printers right now is something like the Creality Ender 3, and there's tons of clones of it and copies of it. It's about 235 by 235 by 250. While it's much bigger than 3D printers in the past, this is still rather small for building something like a full Iron Man cosplay. Now while it's very possible, as Melbourne Iron Man proved here, this is still a little bit small nowadays and you can get a lot better bang for your buck. A smaller printer means you're gonna to need to cut up the 3D files a lot more, print a lot more pieces, and then fuse them back together. Now this can be a lot more time consuming, you have a bigger risk of failures, so you wanna get your hands on a printer that's a good size to cut down on how much stuff, well, you need to cut. The standard build volume size myself and a lot of other Iron Man cosplayers recommend is something about 300 by 300 by 400. This is a common size you'll find on printers like the Creality CR-10S, the Artillery Sidewinder X1. This is becoming more and more common and you can even get your hands on something like the Ender 3 Max. While it's not as tall as some printers, it's still wide enough to print a variety of helmets and other parts on it. Now you're going to get a few people who tell you to just get the biggest printer you possibly can with the biggest build volume. While this isn't really a bad idea, I wouldn't necessarily call it a good idea. Larger printers like this are a lot slower to move, and if you spend days and days on the same part that potentially might fail, you're going to run the risk of not getting the suit done in any type of timely manner, and it's just going to lead to some frustrations. Just because you can print big doesn't mean you always want to. So getting your hands on something about the size of a Creality CR-10S is going to set you up perfectly for not having to cut most of the files up and it's going to give you much larger prints. I'll leave a couple of my personal recommendations down below for printers budgeted around 300 to 400 and maybe a couple more expensive ones that just have a few better features. So I can sit here and make Iron Man suits all day to protect me, but you know what they can't protect me from? Region lock. And that's why I want to talk about today's sponsor, NordVPN. Now hear me out because this is something I was using before I was even on YouTube. As a lot of you know, I used to live over in England and when you live somewhere like that, you're bound to travel around Europe. However, unlike going from state to state, you're going from country to country, which means you're going to be blocked out from a lot of online content. Not only that, but you're bouncing between different places and hotels and hotspots and Wi-Fi signals and you don't really know if your stuff's secure. That's where something like a good VPN comes in handy because you know you're protected and secure no matter where you go. Now I can sit here and preach security all day, that's totally fine, but I know what you're really gonna use this for. Me and my wife would literally use this all the time to watch Netflix and Hulu shows back in America when we were sitting there on the couch over in England. It just takes one click to connect to over 5,000 servers across the world and you're off to the races. So let's cut to the chase. NordVPN is gonna help me hook you guys up. If you go to nordvpn.com slash franklybuilt, you're gonna get a huge discount on a two year membership plus an additional month. Plus you have the risk-free 30 day money back guarantee, so why not try it out? So go use the link down below, take advantage of this awesome offer, and let's get back to the video. Next up, 
filament. Now filament or plastic is the stuff you're gonna put into your 3D printer to actually print the stuff out. Now the running number that seems to go around the hobby is roughly 15 rolls of filament to print a full Iron Man suit. Now you might not use all of that or you might end up needing a little bit more. For context, my first suit here took about 14 rolls to print with a couple failures here and there. But my second suit, which is obviously larger, took actually less rolls because I had learned so much in that time frame. I was able to save material, I had a lot less failures, and I was able to optimize the results a lot better. Which brings me to actually my first hot tip of the whole video. You're going to make mistakes. I did, and you need to embrace them. I documented all of them and I literally share them with you on my YouTube. You're gonna make some errors. You're gonna have some print failures. That's just part of the game. Even if you're doing EVA foam or Pepicura, you're still gonna make a couple errors. But if you learn from them and push on, I promise the results will be worth it. Oh, and while we're on the subject of failed prints, save your failed prints. Don't just throw them out. I printed this helmet too small and it doesn't fit me, but if I need to test some paint or sanding techniques, I have a perfect test subject to do that on. So even if you have a couple failed prints, put them to the side and they can come in handy later. Now there's tons of different filament to choose from. I personally like PLA+, Plus. there's normal PLA, there's PETG. You're gonna have to do a little bit of research on what's gonna fit your needs. Some do better in hot cars and hot suns than others, but all in all, they're roughly gonna cost about the same. A standard roll of filament is anywhere from 15 to 25, maybe $30. So if you're gonna be buying 15 rolls of filament, you'll be looking at about 200 to $300, depending on the sales or deals you can find. There are so many websites that are constantly running bulk sale deals that you can just save up for. I'll link a few of those down below. Um, I personally like Sunlu PLA Plus, but Overture, Hatchbox, there's tons of options to choose from. Now, let me caveat that by saying color doesn't matter unless you don't plan on painting the suit. Now, it'd be nice if filament came out this shiny and smooth. One day, maybe we'll get there. But for now, you're going to have to sand down and paint your 3D prints. So it really doesn't matter what color you print in. Personally, though, I avoid very light colored filaments. You don't want to print in light yellows or whites because when you go and sand them down, you can't see where you've been sanding. And if you get into the hobby, that'll make a lot more more sense. So I'd recommend sticking to darker colors. Dark reds, grays, blacks, even dark blues are perfect for sanding and finishing prints. <sighs> All right, so let's talk about 3D files. Obviously, these things aren't just going to materialize. And you're going to need a template to print. Now, this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions about the hobby. You don't need to know how to 3D model. Just like you don't need to design your own Pepicura templates or EVA foam templates, you can usually find them online because, well, there's other nerds out there who have helped you do the work already. And this is one of my favorite things about the 3D printing hobby as a whole. There are so many amazing skilled modelers out there who just want to see their creations made. So don't feel bad if you go and buy or get a 3D D model or 3D file from somewhere and print it out to be your own. Those modelers are so happy when they see their work brought to life. Send them a few pictures when you're done and I promise they'll be happy. So what should you expect to spend when looking and browsing the internet for 3D files? Well, I'd put aside roughly $100. Now that might seem like a lot, but you have to remember this is labor and time that somebody put into something. It usually isn't free. And though free files exist, and I'll show you a few of them, you're mostly gonna have to pay for them and you kind of get what you pay for sometimes. At the time of filming this video, there's really three good sources for Iron Man suits. The first one's gonna be do3d.com. They probably have the largest variety of suits, but you have to remember that these these are 3D models and they're not going to be one size fits all. You're going to have to scale and rearrange them to fit your body properly and there's some programs we'll talk about after this that can help you do that. Next up would be Nico Industries. He also has suits and helmets, so give that a browse. And then lastly would be Johan 3D. Now, unfortunately, his Instagram was re recently deleted, so he is back up and running, but he has a huge variety of 3D files and full Iron Man suits. Aside from that, there's a good variety of independent 3D modelers, Joe Props 3D, Vec 3D, Walsh 3D, and a multitude of others who are in the Iron Man scene designing suits, designing helmets. So make sure you check those guys out too. And I'll link everybody down below and even people I haven't mentioned for good places to get suits. I even have a few discount codes for a few of these websites. So I'll make sure to link those. And if it helps you save money, awesome. As for free Iron Man suits, like I said, you kind of get what you don't pay for. The only two exceptions that I can really think of currently is a free Iron Man Mark 39 Starboost suit, the same one that's actually sitting behind me right here. That's free on DO3D's website and not a bad suit to start with. The other one is gonna be this Mark 85 inspired suit that's on uh, Thingiverse by Budwin. Now I haven't seen anybody print this suit out yet, but I do have the files. They look pretty decent and probably one of the better free things I've ever seen on Thingiverse. Now, while we're on the subject of 3D files, how do you get these 3D files to fit your body? Now, that's a tutorial for a whole nother day, but you're gonna wanna look into a program called Armorsmith by the Armored Garage. 
This is about a $30 file and it's gonna let you make a 3D avatar of yourself. You're gonna take a ruler and tape measure and measure different points of your body and it'll translate it into the program and then you can drag the files of the 3D prints or the Iron Man suit into the program, size and scale them so you'll know that they'll fit. Now, like I said, I'll make a tutorial for this and I'll come back and link it to this video whenever I'm done with it, but that's probably gonna be the biggest trial you're gonna run into. So add that to the cost of file. So we're looking at maybe 120, $130. Okay, so now you've got the files, you've got the printer, you printed everything out, but how do you wear the suit? This is something people don't commonly think about. The buckles, the straps, the nylon, the glue. How do you hold the suit together so you can actually wear it? Now this is gonna be a very hard thing to budget for because it all depends on the suit you're making, how you wanna wear it, how extra you wanna be with it, but roughly the consensus seems to be about $100. If you budget for that, you can get most of this stuff on Amazon or your local hobby or craft store. We're talking about things like foam, an undersuit to wear so the armor doesn't pinch you and rub you and get really uncomfortable. And honestly, with your first suit, you're probably gonna go through a little bit of trial and error by gluing stuff on, taking it off, and realizing it didn't really work that way. So really, $100, you'll probably go through that kinda of quick. But let's move on to the next part that typically gives people the most trouble, painting. Okay, let's talk about paint. Now, this is another thing that's gonna be a huge variable when making your first suit. Now, typically when people are doing their first suit, they're gonna opt for something like spray paint. It's easier, more readily available, and you don't need as much equipment to do it. You really can just take it outside and paint it if you need to. But before you can get to the painting process to make it all look shiny and fancy, you're gonna need to get your 3D print while not looking like a 3D print. For this step, you're going to need to budget things like sandpaper, bondo, tape, and on top of that, the paint. Now trying to figure out a budget for things like sandpaper and tape, which are really heavily consumables, is kind of nearly impossible. But I think if you put aside 50 bucks and go down to Walmart, you'll pretty much be in good shape to do something like this. And if you buy too much, you're just gonna have leftovers for the next project, so that's really not a bad thing. This is gonna be the most labor-intensive and time-consuming part. Yeah, the printer did most of the work and you were able to leave it printing and come back to the finished parts, but this is gonna require actual elbow grease to get the prints nice and smooth. Going from this to that really doesn't happen overnight, so you're gonna need to also budget in, you know, time. So I just recently repainted my entire suit and I have a good number in my head of all of the cans I use because I still have them. However, I was using some fairly expensive clear coats and paints that actually racked up the price pretty quickly, but you don't have to do this. You can get red paints from Walmart or Home Depot, whatever fits your budget. I think if you put aside $200 to $300, you'll be in good shape to paint your whole suit. Now, obviously, if you wanna go the airbrushing route or the professional shop compressor route, your results will definitely show and vary, but you don't need to do that right away, especially not in your first suit. Get it out, do the trial and error, learn how to paint maybe with a rattle can, and then start to upgrade. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is probably the most common thing with Iron Man suits, the electronics. Now, just like the paint, this will be one of the biggest variables you're gonna run into, and it's very much gonna depend on the suit you're printing. Now, the older model suits, like the Mark III's and the Mark VII's, don't have a lot of electronics and lights per se, but they might have a couple flaps that you want to open and close. Whereas something like the Mark 85, Mark 50, Mark 46, they are completely littered with lights, so depending on how you want to approach that, the cost can go up pretty quickly. Now the electronics in my original suit cost me roughly about $100, but the new electronics I have, all the NeoPixels and all the color changing lights, that ran me about $300. So I think if you set aside around $200 for electronics, servos, lights, boards, wires, you'll be in pretty good shape. Now what's great about the electronics and the whole Iron Man ecosystem is they're getting easier and easier to do as more people pop up wanting to pursue this hobby. Take for example, this Crashworks 3D board. This entire little board right here has all of the connectors and coding and programming to power my entire suit. The mask can open, the eyes can turn on, the gloves do pew pew pew, all of that fun stuff. And this thing costs about 30, 40 dollars. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg on like pre-made kits that you just stuff into your suit. You can actually learn how to do this very, very easily now and save a lot of money in the process. Now, just like the paint, you can go as crazy as you want with this. If you wanna make it really fly, go for it, but you might spend a cool mill or two. But if you're wearing it just to conventions and cosplay events, or maybe you're just gonna wander around the neighborhood and scare people, well, like I said, about $200 should put you in the right spot. All right guys, before we wrap this up, let's do a quick little recap of all the prices and points we talked about so you know what to expect going into this. First up, the 3D printer. Like I said, about $300, $400 should get you started. You can always build up from there, but you're looking for a printer with a build volume of about 300 by 300. Next up, the files, roughly $100 budgeted for this, but don't forget to grab Armorsmith, so let's say $130. Filament, 15 rolls should get the job done, anywhere between $200 to $300, 
Don't miss out on those bulk deals so you can just stock up and get ready for the whole project. Straps, buckles, Velcro, foam, all of that good stuff, you should be able to get it for around $100. There will be some trial and error, but you want the suit to be comfortable. Sandpaper, tape, all the consumables you're going to use to get the suit smooth before you go into paint. I think 50 bucks will do it, especially if you go to Walmart or Home Depot. The paint. Now I think roughly $200 to $300 should cover all the paint you're going to need for the suit. And hey, if you don't like how the paint came out the first time, you can always sand it back down and repaint it later on. Finally, the electronics. Anywhere from $100 to $300 should be able to power an entire suit. And again, you can go as crazy as you want, but that starting base point should be enough. Now, if you're crafty with all of this, you can spend less than I talked about. You can spend more than I talked about. It's totally up to you, but these are the baselines that me and many other cosplayers have come to a good conclusion on. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Uh, as I said before, if you have any questions about the video, anything I didn't cover, please leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond to all of them, and if enough questions pop up, I'll make a follow-up video. Also, please check the description box down below. I'm going to drop so many links for you guys. Tutorials, guides, recommended printers, places to buy, all of the stuff you're going to need for the suit, so don't miss out on that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. This way you stay up to date on all the cosplay and 3D printing stuff I put out every week. I really do hope you learned something valuable through this video, maybe something you hadn't considered, or the actual cost of what goes into making a suit like this. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day.